Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, uh, I am discussing uh, one discourse from the Buddha, which is uh, Anthology of Discourses 1.6. Uh, and this discourse is on downfalls. 12 things that can lead to a person's downfall. Right? So, it is given that one time Buddha was staying near Savatthi in Jetta's grove. Late at night, a glorious deity, lighting up the entire Jetta's grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed and stood to one side. Standing to one side, the deity addressed the Buddha. We asked Gautama about man's downfall. We have come to ask you, sir, what leads to downfall? That means that deity wanted to know from the Buddha that what leads to a person's downfall. So, in this discourse, Buddha lists down some 12 uh, points which lead, which can, which have the potential to lead to a person's downfall, right? So I'll take it one by one, right? So the first downfall is, one who loves the teaching succeeds, but the hater of the teaching meets their downfall. That means, if we hate the teaching, right, the, 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 the enlightened teachings uh, of the Buddha or any master, if we hate the teachings, if we have kind of a resentment or an aversion towards the pure teachings, that is one uh, first downfall, the reason for the downfall. Second is, the bad are dear to him, he has no love for the good, he believes the teachings of the bad that will lead to his downfall. That means a person, this is my interpretation, uh, I am just, I can only say from my uh, perspective, my interpretation, is that people who are not good, that those people are dear to him. That means if the person prefers the company of bad people, people who have vices, if he does that and he does not have any love for the good, that means he doesn't have any love for the good things, right, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the pious things on the, of the dharma, right. He believes in the teachings of the bad, that is the second reason of the downfall. Third reason is a person who is fond of sleep, fond of company, a man who does no work, he is lazy, marked by anger. This is the third reason. Again, I will say fond of sleep, fond of company, man who does no work, he is lazy, marked by anger. So This is the third reason for a person's downfall. The fourth is Though he is able, he is, does not look after his mother and father when elderly past their prime. Right? So a person who doesn't look, take care of the parents when they are past their prime, when they are dependent on him, if he doesn't take care of them, then that is a cause of downfall, fourth cause of downfall. Fifth is, fifth down, cause of downfall is a person who deceives, he deceives with lies, ascetics and Brahmins and other renunciates. That means a person who either insults or deceives them, the, the ascetics or the Brahmins or the sages or the renunciates, people who have left this world for a higher goal of liberation. So if, especially if it's like a lesson for us that not to insult or deceive any sage or saintly being, right? So that's the fifth reason. Sixth, a man with plenty of wealth, gold and food del eats delicacies alone. That means the person has a lot of wealth but he doesn't share his wealth. He eats it alone. That means the, the sense that I get is that Buddha wanted to say is that he uses the wealth only for his own good. Right? He doesn't share. He doesn't practice giving. I will make separate videos on Buddha's teachings on giving but here it is coming out as a sixth reason for downfall. Seventh reason is, vain of caste, wealth and clan, a man looks down on his own family. See, I am not very clear on exact meaning of this one. Vain is basically pride, pride of one's caste. That means if a person believes that he is of a higher caste, he has a lot of wealth and his clan, right? He, he is proud of that and he looks down on his own family. That means what my interpretation is on his own family is his near and dear ones, his extended circle of near and dear ones, he looks down upon them and he has a lot of pride. The, the essential thing here Buddha is saying is the greed about caste, belonging to a higher caste 
read about wealth and clan right if he has that and he looks down on other people so my interpretation is when he says when buddha says on his own family it means a wider meaning an extended meaning of the bigger circle of the society if he looks down on other people that is the seventh reason then eighth reason is in womanizing drinking and gambling a man wastes all that has that he has earned that means we should be very careful about our money what we spend we should not spend on things like womanizing drinking gambling no drinking is one of the cardinal five precepts if you are following buddhist teachings no drinking no gambling right we we should not because gambling involves stealing so one of the key principles is no stealing so womanizing again sexual conduct and misconduct angle right so that is the eighth uh, uh, re- cause for the downfall ninth not content with his own partners he debauches himself with prostitutes and with others partners right here it comes the sexual misconduct angle that means visiting prostitutes not content first of all not being content with his own life partner with his own wife that discontentment which leads him to visit prostitutes and which leads him to uh, have affairs extramarital affairs with other person's partners right so this is like uh, again it is violating the noble eightfold path violating the precepts comes under the sexual misconduct right so that is the ninth right so what we learn from this is to be content with one life partner buddha places a lot of emphasis on the institution of marriage right so having contentment with one life partner having marital uh, 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 loyalty right okay 10th is a man well past his prime marries a girl with budding breasts he cannot sleep for jealousy and that leads to his downfall point number 10 what my understanding is the sense that i get is a man who is well past his prime so this buddha is not saying that a person who is well past his prime cannot marry but what i get from it is that a person who has a lot of sexual craving in him that he go he is past his prime instead of devoting himself to the dharma to the learning of the teachings of the dharma and following a a, a life uh, and not dead not uh, de- devoting him to sensory pleasures he marries a girl with budding breasts that means marries a young girl much more younger in comparison to him right and he cannot sleep for jealousy that means what my understanding is that maybe the girl that he marries is beautiful and uh, uh, he, others have eyes on him and he's he he is jealous and that that again that jealousy becomes the cause of his downfall that is point number 10 right point number 11 is he places an authority a woman or a man who is drunkard and a wastrel that leads to his downfall here what i understand is that uh, we should be very careful in terms of if we have a business or a society or a institution uh, if we are not taking active part in that particular uh, institution right or running a business we should be careful on who we hand over that particular institution to right to that business to we should not give the authority we should not put in authority a person who is Uh, not only i will say drunkard or wastrel but also who is irresponsible who is a who, who is driven by greed who is driven by anger because somewhere the karma of that person's actions in running your business will also come to you right so this is my limited understanding so that is the 11th reason and the 12th and the last and the final is a man of little wealth and strong craving born into an aristocratic family sets his sh- sights on kinship right so my understanding is again a man of little wealth and strong craving he has little wealth but the craving is very high born into an arist- aristocratic family sets his sights on kinship now we don't have aristocratic families and kinship now anymore in the current times but what my understanding in how we can interpret it is the craving for for power right and that power is not only in the family uh, affairs but also in at work and all the craving that we have for power and uh, uh, that can be a cause for the downfall right so buddha says seeing these downfalls in the world an astute and noble person 
accomplished in vision will enjoy a world of grace so what we can take away from this particular discourse um, uh, from the buddha is uh, just reflecting on these 10 downfalls uh, where we are right now and uh, uh, desisting from those this downfalls that we are prone to be mindful of our conduct and uh, come back again and again to the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path come back keep studying buddha's teachings i hope this uh, video was useful uh, do share your thoughts your comments the 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 link to the detailed discourse the, the text of the discourse is there given in the description do share your feedback your thoughts on this uh, namo buddhaye namo buddha